guys and I just want to say welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to give you guys a brief introduction into who I am in case you guys want to know who I am and if you guys see me suitable enough to give you guys advice based on what I know and my experience. If you don't care about that, I'm going to put a timestamp around here and in the description we can go right into me describing my belt. Right, so for those of you that want to get to know me, hello guys, appreciate you guys uh, trying to get to know me, doing your due diligence. Right, uh, so my name is Alex Rivas and I am a military police officer in the Air Force, reserves, right? I am, it's called security forces, right? I have been doing uh, commission security work for like a year and a half, two years, and um, I have learned a lot. I have had the opportunity to work for a great company and I will get into companies and how to find a good company for you later on in the video i work in texas though so if you are watching this and you don't live in texas it's going to be a little bit more texas suited like within the laws and stuff which you can carry because i don't know what officers in other states can carry security officers right but um i'm sure it's probably going to be the same make sure you do your due diligence and look up your state laws right so like i said i work on security here in houston and i go to houston community college full time for uh, criminal justice I should be going to the police academy around March or April for Houston and vlogging that. So if you're interested in that, like, please subscribe. I also vlog my uh, security forces. So when I go, I also do those vlogs. You can subscribe if you want to see that. And if you just want to see this and never see me again, then that's fine too. That's what YouTube is about, right? So we're going to get into my duty belt, right? I don't have the exact prices for everything. And like, I bought this setup like two years ago, right? So what I remember, what I can, I will link in the description, right? And remember, everything's gonna be different for everyone. There's gonna be cheaper options that I'm gonna uh, walk you guys through, but I will give you guys what the minimum standard for me is, right? Because you can go work armed security with just a gun, and that's it, a gun and a belt, and you're good to go. That doesn't mean that that's what I'm gonna advise, and nothing close to that, right? Because you need to uphold yourself to a certain standard. If you, I mean, if you're gonna go to a company that's paying you like $10 to work armed security, then go ahead. But if you want like a professional company, like the one that I've been like honestly blessed to work for, like a, a great company, and I won't be linking it in the description because I don't know any of you guys. So you just guys will have to do your own research. And I will tell you how I came up on my own company because I don't feel comfortable putting on my company if I don't know you in person, right? So this is my belt and I will tell you how much it costs. From memory, it's a rough estimate without all these attachments, right? All of this will not come pre-built, okay? Just make sure you guys are tracking. You will have to build this yourself. They will give you the belt, that's it, this. The belt, this, and this. That's all they will give you. All these attachments you will buy for separately. Uh, a rough estimate, you guys may be spending like cheapest, like 200 to 500, which is what I think I spent uh, building your belt, right? But it's something you will have for the rest of your life. So invest in it, because you buy a, a a $200 setup with everything is gonna turn to shit within one or two years. This, I've been doing it for two years and it looks perfect, right? So what I would advise, right, is, well, we're gonna go down the list. A tourniquet, right? This is the tourniquet that I carry. Why should security officers carry a tourniquet? Well, because it's just, why not have it? It doesn't take up too much space takes up like three inches on your belt. So why not just have a tourniquet? Cause I'd rather have a tourniquet and not need it than need a tourniquet and not have it. Okay, so now for the firearm that I carry, I have it unloaded uh, and clear, right? For the video. So I carry a Smith & Wesson m 2.0, nine millimeter, right? This one cost me $500 at Academy. And I do have a light on this. So the purpose of the light is if you're at nighttime, right, it has, the laser it has the laser and light and it has just the light right and it turns on by clicking it here uh this carries i believe 17 plus one i do carry with one in the chamber that's why you see a bullet here outside because this is the one that usually goes in the chamber as for ammunition i carry home in the fence ammo don't be out there working security with range ammo you're setting yourself up for failure the light that i have set up here is a o light it will mount you don't have to buy a mount for your pistol i don't know how new you guys are but it mounts just here it's as easy as putting it here clipping it this was 150 dollars o light and i believe it was a thousand lumens uh i would just say as a rule of thumb you don't have to buy one as expensive but if you're going to be working security at night 
I highly, 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 highly recommend you have a pistol mounted light. You can find this, but cheaper for less lumens, right? That's something that you will have to see about yourself and see if you're comfortable, right? And of course, this is the magazine that goes with it. It has 17, so it's 17 plus one. And the one round that goes in the chamber that I carry with, that's here on the side. Now, this is where you can also downgrade. I carry hinged handcuffs. So the difference between hinge is that these don't move around, right? The other ones that are linked move around. Hinged is easier when you cuff a suspect. Just go here, just go here, so it's easy, right? Now I carry two sets of handcuffs and I also had to buy, if you're gonna buy hinge handcuffs, you have to buy a hinged handcuff pouch because they're different, you know, they're, they're different things. And my dog walks up in here. Uh, yeah, it's just a dog, so I don't know. I heard her walking around. So you can buy cheaper. Uh, these are like, I think 40 a piece when I bought them on gauze. So it's $80, $80 in cuff. You can again, buy a cheaper option if you're comfortable with it, right? And gauze, I recommend it, especially if you're military. Gauze gives a military discount, so it's pretty cool. And I have two sets of handcuffs. So I have one on my right side where my gun goes. Behind my gun is one handcuff. On my left side, I have another handcuff behind my baton because you never know which hand you need. Again, that's something I do personally. You can just buy one, right? But at a minimum, have one set of handcuffs, okay? Again, like I said here, another pouch, another set of hinge handcuffs. These ones are facing the other way because the ones on my left, if I take it out like this, they're facing the right way. When it's on my right, I take it out like this, they're facing the right way without looking. Right? Here, boom, boom. Now, for a less lethal, I highly recommend you guys have a less lethal if you do not already practice a martial art. I practice MMA and I had a few fights in Houston for boxing. So I highly suggest that you guys take up a self-defense class you don't have to but I highly suggest it right because you have to be comfortable with your uh, empty handed skills so this is a baton right i didn't extend it all the way the way i could close it i carry a baton as my less lethal you could carry a baton this one costed me 40 dollars on gauze and the baton holster right uh i think these holsters were 20 a piece the, hol the baton holster was 25 a piece uh don't quote me on it and prices change you know right now we're, we're everything's like getting price gouged so uh, yeah, here I have two more mags. I highly, highly recommend you do not just carry a gun with one mag, right? Two more mags, home defense ammo, hollow point, 17 rounds filled up with a dual open mag pouch, right? So it's here. This is where they go and it's open to the top. So where when I have to reload, put it in, address the threat, right? Uh, so this setup, I would say would cost me around like 300, 350 dollars. Uh, the most expensive part was when I bought my firearm, right? So this is what I carry. Uh, you can go more, much more simpler if you want to by getting a, a belt. Oh, okay, my bad, I'm getting in front of myself. Keepers, keepers are important. Why? Because if you don't have keepers and you get in a fight and this clips on like this, right? You get in a fight, they're tussling, and this falls off, now your belt fell off of your body. What keepers do is you will have a tactical pants on with a belt underneath, right? This clips onto the belt and your gun belt, right? And then if they unclip it, it'll be held on by these keepers right here. So you need keepers in case you get in a fight. You don't want to get your firearm taken from you or just your whole belt to fall off, you know, because it fell off on a, you guys were fighting. So keepers, these were like $10, right? The minimum I will suggest, the minimum I would feel comfortable with you guys going out is with the level three. Oh yeah, I didn't hit on that. So your holster level is important. There's different levels of holsters, right? And let me show you how it works. Obviously you guys know it's cool, right? This is a level three because it has uh, a layer of protection, right? More than the level two. A level two is just retention. Level two would be this, right? It's just a retention holster, that's it. But my level three has a hood that claps that is over it. So when I draw it, and uh, it has a thumb protector here at the front. So I would suggest you carry a level three holster, not a level two. A level two holster, um, like I said, it would have the top open and it'll be a retention and just either a, a button here you press and draw, or it could be behind the gun here where you press down and draw. 
I recommend the level three because you get in a fight and you don't have a hood to protect it. Someone can just draw it right from the other way. That was going to run you the most money is going to be the handcuffs, your firearm, uh, your attachment. I highly, highly recommend don't do what I did. I have a Safari Land holster. That's just um, the holster for the firearm itself, not with the light. When you buy a light, you have to make sure your holster is light compatible because you see this little, um, I guess, mold here is for the light. So if I had, I'm going to go get my old holster. Oh, it's right here. So I can show you guys. It's right here. So this is my old holster. Again, it's level three, as you can see, because it has the hood to protect it and it has the, the thumb safety, right? So the difference here is I didn't buy the light holster because at that time I didn't think I needed a light attachment on my pistol, right? Again, it's clear. So it fits perfectly like this, right? And this one is one of those where you go here and draw. Now, with this, for example, it's not going to fit because it's not meant for a light, right? And if you buy the one that's a light and you don't read that it's one with the light, if you put it in and close it. You see? So make sure if you buy a light attachment that your holster says 9mm Smith & Wesson 2.0 with light attachment, right? Because if not, then you're going to be super sad, right? Because now that has the attachment, you see how it doesn't just fall out? So yeah, like I said, I highly recommend because you're going to get a job that's going to make you work nights. Nice. I'm telling you this right now. I have a flashlight, but not on my uh, duty belt, right? So... I carry like in my pocket in my 5.11 pants. I'll show you guys this like in a little bit. So I highly recommend you get a light attachment because you never know in the moment. It's easier. You want two hands on your gun. You click the button and you have a light and you have a laser. Just do it. It's 150 extra dollars. You'll make the money back. Do not be cheap with items that could potentially save your life. Okay. I know it's security. I know many of you guys are going to can have a career and never even draw your weapon once. But it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Trust me, okay? So I'm just saying for you guys, right? I had, like now I have this holster that I don't need because I don't I never carry without my light. So I mean if you live in Houston and you have a Smith and Wesson MMP, uh I guess I'll I'll sell it to you. Like fifty bucks. I bought it for a hundred, but at this point <laughs> for fifty bucks. Holsters are expensive. That was a hundred, this was a hundred and like sixty, hundred like an eighty, so if you're in Houston and you got the same gun as me, there you go, I guess, because don't need that anymore. And if you are going to carry it like that, have a flashlight on your belt, right? So, yeah, guys, I think that's it for my belt. I've shown you guys everything, my baton, right, how it extends. Oh, you do need a baton certification to carry it. Uh, let me hit on tasers real quick. My company does not allow officers to carry tasers. So if you want to go ahead and buy a taser, that's great. Uh, good on you right just make sure you get the proper training and you know when to use it and don't be too fast to use your tools right um at the end of the day you guys are security guards you're not police officers do not overstep your boundaries okay uh the first step to security is deterrence that's it you're not trying to, you're not arresting anyone you're not taking anyone to jail so be smart about what you do okay i repeat we're not law enforcement officers and even though I'm a police officer in the Air Force, that doesn't mean shit for working security, okay? And uh, um, I don't know if I'm going to hit that. I'm going to make a separate police, police. I'm going to make a separate video on level two, three, and four security if this gets a lot of views. If not, then I'm just going to do my belt setup. And like, I'm going to show you my boots and my pants. So I think that's all I need for here. Thank you guys for watching. This is my duty belt. If you don't want to watch what pants... I carry and what boots I use my bad what boots and my go bag and why I carry certain things then you could just stop the video because at this point my belt tutorial is over and I'm going to go into what I carry personal and the pants why I carry those pants boots why those boots and my go bag and I'll explain to you what a go bag is so that's it for those of you that just watched for the for the belt if you have any questions put it in the description I will answer it if this gets over like probably over 500 views and people like want to ask me what more about security what can i do insight help then i'll make a separate video because i don't want to make this too long as it is so um thank you guys for watching if you're gonna watch me get my pants my go bag and everything then i'm gonna make a cut in the video and come back with everything all right guys so these are the pants uh they're 511 tactical pants and this is the belt there's also a 511 belt 
like I said, this is the one that you put the keepers in below and you clip them to your belt. That way, if you get in a fight, the belt stays on. This belt was $40, pants was $50. On my right cargo pocket, I carry gloves in case I ever need to put gloves on, you know, to handle a person. I carry a handcuff key. This one was $10. It's a long one, right? Um, and I carry a pen from my job. Oh, I had it on. I'm not going to show you the job marking because he has the company name on it. And on my left side, here, I carry, let me see, this is my keys. Here goes my phone in my left pocket, will go my phone, and any miscellaneous items here on my left. So yeah, this is the pants, I really like them. I've had these for like three years, still going, $50. This is what I mean, if you go buy a $10 pair of pants because it's cheaper now, it's not gonna last you three years. I promise you. And for the boots, I have 511 boots. Again, 511, super good brand. Highly recommend it. These are the Fast Track 2.0. I believe they're like $100. And uh, I had an older pair because I've been with the Police Explorer since I was like 14. So I had my first pair of 511s then. And they lasted me five years. And then I bought these like a little bit ago. Like maybe a year, two years ago. So these have been holding up really good. They're lightweight. And I like them, and I'm going to be using these when I uh, patrol with Houston police. So it's, these boots have been through a lot. Police explorers, security, and one day, uh, Houston police. So yeah, this is my go bag. And uh, a go bag, for those of you that don't know what it is, I have my last name here. Um, I use the name tape I have from the Air Force. And a go bag is just a bag that has all the essentials that you need while you're working. Now, I don't like fucking work security with this on my back, right? I just have it either in my car or in a client's office, you know, it's just depending on your job and what you're doing. So here, it's just some pouches are like my personal things, miscellaneous things. Uh, the first pouch, let's see what it is. Just miscellaneous thing, a notepad, um, a flag. This is a tourniquet. I know it's not like a, it's like a makeshift tourniquet. I'm not going to take it apart and show you guys how it is, but if you take it apart, it works as a tourniquet, right? I also have a charger, contacts, because I wear contacts, and that's it. Second pouch, let's see what I have in there. Second pouch is my medical pouch. Like I said, this is the whole point of a go bag. I have a little first aid kit here. I am first aid certified, AED certified, CPD certified, because of the military and my job. I have a bite and sting kit. I have another tourniquet. Um... And I have a CPR mask. That way I don't have to like touch lips with the person while I'm doing CPR. I have contacts here for me again. And that's it for that pouch. I did have uh, another first aid kit in here. It's just that it's in my car. And I just have anime stickers here. So I watch anime. And I'm pretty much that's it. These other things, I just, it's empty, right? Because I also take this to the gym. So yeah, that's a go bag. And yeah, the, you don't have to carry this. It just makes you a more prepared security officer. So I do it because I rather need it. I mean, I rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, right? So yeah, guys, I think that's it for my video. If there's any questions, just hit me up. If there's any questions on how to find employment for security in Texas, how to do your tops, how to use the website. If this gets enough views and enough comments, I'll do it. Cause if not, this video is gonna be super long and I might just be wasting my time cause I might not even get videos. I mean, views on this. And if you guys are from my vlogs and you're watching this, appreciate y'all. I know it's not a security forces vlog, but um, you know, decided to change it up a little bit. So I appreciate, I appreciate you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys subscribe. If you know, you guys are watching just cause of the security, subscribe dude. I'm gonna make more security videos. You know, you can see my my police academy when I go through the police academy. So yeah, guys, subscribe and appreciate you guys for watching.